previous lesson, we focused on opportunity finding, looking for opportunities to either remove a pain or to provide a gain or a vitamin. These different approaches and others referenced on the website will help you to identify many opportunities to create new ideas and solutions. In this lesson, we'll discuss how you can gather data that will help you better define and address each problem that you've identified. This allows you to choose which solution has the greatest chance of being adopted. And remember that creativity only becomes innovation once it's adopted by users. Let's start by considering the types of data you might collect and why some data collection methods help you define the problem and the most important issues, or the one that has the greatest likelihood for adoption. In contrast, other data might offer a base point to measure improvements in performance once your solution's been introduced. Identifying appropriate data that can form evidence of an identified problem and that the developed solution works reinforces the experimental nature of our creative problem-solving approach, which includes identifying the problem, developing a hypothesis about the cause of that problem, solving the problem, implementing the solution, and then measuring the result. An innovation and scientific approach to creative problem-solving. Before we go into details of evidence gathering, let me share some general insights that will help you identify the critical causes of a problem. First, don't assume there's only one set of causes. Look divergently for unique causes and at diverse aspects of the problem to identify possible relevant facts and symptoms about different causes. Structured processes like the fishbone chart can help you with this. Second, gather evidence from several different viewpoints, including ones that emphasize what you're looking at and ones that might oppose it. For example, use De Bono's Six Thinking Hats, which looks at an issue from six different perspectives. Third, be aware of unconscious assumptions, such as making assumptions about which is factor is cause and which is effect. Fourth, if possible, look for evidence of causal relationships, for example, looking at the sequence in which things happen, or trends that provide some sort of logical cause and effect. Fifth, suggest what might stop you from solving the problem. For example, why has it not already been addressed? This can provide a better understanding to the real cause and also help you develop possible solutions. Six, identify who else has or might have had the problem and maybe how they're addressing it. This can give you evidence of whether your problem is really the same or quite different, both of which are useful when you're coming up with a potential solution. There are three primary ways of gathering data to help you find and refine the problem. Data collection using an embedded process to gather information in real time. Interviews asking participants how they experience the problem. And observation looking at the current situation as a third party in order to identify opportunities for improvement. The classic approach to data gathering is linked to fault analysis, which we discussed in the previous lesson, where data is gathered and cleaned so that it can subsequently be categorized and analyzed. The data collection process can also be done electronically and can consist of gathering data on inspection reports completed as part of the process. Failures or compliance issues or quality data can also be gathered after the problem has been experienced, often from users. Using customer feedback is extremely accessible and in reality most organizations can get continuous feedback from customers. It's important to recognize that this is just one means of gathering data. The approach taken will vary based on the context, the amount of data and the degree of accuracy required, as well as the cost of both collecting and processing the data. We'll provide some links to other techniques that you can use on the website. As we mentioned previously, while providing good customer service often requires dealing with the symptoms of a problem, our approach to innovation is going beyond identifying them, but finding them and then removing the root cause of a problem, thus reducing the number of times that problem occurs. The data you retrieve can be used in three ways. First, you can use it to remove the most frequently occurring problem. Second, you can use it to remove the problem that is causing the most pain to the customer. And third, 
you can use it to reduce the problem that is causing the greatest cost to the company. These three different approaches allow you to make strategic decisions as to which problem to address first. A simple example, one that often frustrates me on the university campus, is buying snacks, of course healthy ones, from a vending machine. How many times have you wondered if it's worth the risk? We know that reliability is important to users and to operators alike. And according to campus surveys, it would seem that vending machines are often viewed as being unreliable. You might start the process by using an interview technique with customers to identify the six most common reasons why they didn't receive the product from the vending machine. For example, they may find the machine's not on, or that the machine is out of the product you want. Alternatively, the machine might not accept or register the money that you put in, or the customer might choose the wrong product. Other reasons might be the machine makes a selection mistake, doesn't give you what you want, or, as frequently happens, the dispensing mechanism fails to operate. An interesting question is how would you collect the data to find out the occurrence of each? That would help you better understand the causes of the problem so that you can address them. The reason the question is interesting is that when looking at the whole process and identifying the magnitude and causes of each problem, that you're able to use the different techniques we've previously introduced. At the simplest level, it's possible to gather some data directly from the machine, assuming it's an electronic one. For example, when the machine accepts money or when it jams. But measuring when it vends the wrong item is much more challenging and requires separate data and a different approach to gathering it. To get at the detail regarding the machine being out of stock of merchandise, or the merchandise getting stuck, you might have to conduct interviews. The most challenging one being when the customer makes a mistake, which always seems to happen to me, giving me those chocolate bars instead of the healthy apple. But that requires observation of how the user behaves to try and better understand how they made the selection and how the error occurred. Gathering the whole picture on the machine can involve a number of different ways of gathering the data, from electronic ways to using observation techniques. From a customer satisfaction perspective or strategic perspective, especially for the distributor who might view being out of stock as the most important single factor, each of these things can lead to lost sales and lost satisfaction. Interestingly, some modern machines have electronics that communicate information such as out of stock to the operator, who then has to decide how quickly to get someone out to the machine to replenish the stock. The issue of customer error is more challenging in many cases, not the responsibility of the distributor, but rather the machine's designer. Machines that are easier to operate and less confusing will lead to greater volume sold, therefore leading to increased profitability for the distributor. This emphasizes the importance of understanding how value is created and where it's created. Assuming that you can gather data directly from the machine, allowing you to have engineers redesign components of the machine, allows you to improve machine reliability, not just how it works. It's here that you might use a simple Pareto analysis to identify the most common form of problem. Based on the work of Vilfredo Pareto, the Pareto analysis is often used in a quality setting to help identify the most frequent causes of a problem. Pareto, an engineer and economist, who came up with the 80-20 principle that 80% of problems are due to 20% of possible causes, was interested in distribution. The Pareto approach enables you to focus on addressing problem causes that will overcome the greatest number of issues. Using this tool, we basically gather all the relevant data and then categorize it, allowing us to rank it based on frequency of occurrence. The failure analysis and Pareto approach suggests that in order to get to the root cause of a problem, you need to gather more data on the reasons for coin mechanisms failing more times than other anything else. And this allows us to create a second level of analysis. So once you've done a high level Pareto analysis to identify the main issue, you can take the second level analysis and do a Pareto analysis on that to get really deeply at the root cause. The neat thing about this second level analysis is it helps you clearly identify a cause of a problem. As we've said on numerous occasions, clarity 
around the cause of the problem and a better definition of that problem allows you to come up with solutions. In this Pareto analysis approach, we've used both user feedback to identify possible areas of concern and value chain analysis to identify key points of competitive advantage for the machine. For example, in the vending machine case, the vending machine manufacturer will be interested in adding features to make it easier to order the right product or to ensure that the machine is always full. These approaches in totality help you identify and often quantify other aspects of data collection and analysis. In this lesson and in the previous one, we've identified a number of approaches to identify then refine problems, with the idea being to restate the problem in a way that naturally leads to the solution. There are a number of other approaches to problem identifications and restatements that we include on the website. In the next lesson, I'll present a brief overview of several creative problem solving tools which will help you move from a better understanding of the cause of a problem to being able to use your creativity to address and overcome the problem and come up with innovative solutions. Understanding the variety of tools that are available and then trying them out will enable you to choose the best tools for the problem you're addressing, help you improve your creativity and improve the outcomes from your creative problem solving process.